You're listening to a Frequency Podcast Network production. The Brock and Dalby Podcast. This is the Brock and Dalby Podcast. Welcome to Monday. My name is Brock. I'm Dalby. And man, uh, I don't know if the eclipse has already happened or not, wherever you're listening. (laughs) But can we say it? I am so over this eclipse, dude. Yeah, I mean, I'm as we're recording this, I'm excited for my kids to get to kind of experience something, but I'll be happier tomorrow when it's not the only thing anybody wants to talk about. I can't wait, because the only time you're ever going to hear the word eclipse is if you hear total eclipse of the heart. <laughs> That's it. Or if you watch The Wedding Singer or something, you know? Isn't there a car called an eclipse? Isn't, isn't there like a Mitsubishi or something like that? Screw that car. <laughs> Screw that car. I don't, I don't think know. I've said eclipse this much in my life in like as much as I have in the past week. Dude. Honestly, yeah. And uh, well, I guess it's not totally over because after today, then we talk about all the people who either did something dumb or hurt themselves during the eclipse and then we can move on. Dude, I might put a permanent ban on the E word after this week, dude. <laughs> Fuck the eclipse. <laughs> Let's get into the show. The Brock and Dolby Brock and Dolby Podcast. The Brock and Delby Podcast. I actually did something super dumb over the weekend. I burnt my armpit. Look at the... Holy look, hell! Look at that. What did you do? Look at that. It's pretty gnarly, eh? What is that? Is that? A, why is it an oval? It looks like someone bicked you. Yeah. <laughs> but bigger. It, 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 yeah, so I did this on Saturday. Oh my god. Check this out in the stupidest way possible. I, I, you need to explain it. Uh, I was making some breakfast, and I had some potatoes in the oven there. Sure. And, uh... I figured they were cooked, so I kind of just wanted to snag one. Okay. And I opened it up a little bit, but I didn't open up the oven door completely, and I just reached my arm in like a savage. Because you didn't want to lose the heat of the oven? I touched my armpit on the oven, burned the absolute life out of it, and then the worst part is, is then I got my (laughs) arm on top. You see the the line? Oh, my God. So I went bing, bang. You got a sandwich burn. Oh. What what noise did you make when this happened? <laughs> <laughs> Heavy f- sounds. Oh my god, dude, those are gnarly burns. Dude, and it's the worst because then I had to go all weekend, and it's like the burn is just like rubbing against like yeah. my ribs there. I guess technically, whatever. Hold it up again. Yeah. What do you? I mean, that looks like a. It looks like a toonie that got kind of smashed into an oval instead of a circle. Like it's roughly like that you left size. it on the train tracks or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, kind of got flattened. Out. Out a little bit. It hurts so bad. And Courtney's oh like, I don't have God. any sympathy for you. She's like, why are you just snagging potatoes from the hot oven? Though? No, yeah, I mean, <laughs> sometimes you gotta you gotta have a test one, you know? I'm, like, I'm bummed out that you're injured, but she's kind of right in terms of <laughs> I can't feel too, too bad for you. It felt, you know when you burn yourself and the skin just instantly feels hot? Oh, yeah. I was just picturing like Osmosis Jones, like that movie. (laughs) And they're all trying to like fix the situation real quick. (laughs) An Osmosis Jones reference was not on my bingo card this morning. What is, because normally when you burn yourself, like even the one you've got on the top of your arm, like you run it under cold water. What do you do for the armpit? Luckily, we have uh, like the hose in our kitchen sink thing. Spraying so I'm up. like tilting it up at my armpit like, oh my god, oh you're, my god. You're having a trailer park sink shower to try and calm the burn And down. then I was like eating my breakfast uh, like one of those gym bros that has like the luggage arms where they can't. <laughs> Carrying the invisible suitcase. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I, it sucks to put my arm down now, and it's probably the oh. dumbest way I've ever burned myself in my entire life. Dude, I have burned my arm on the oven before, just from, like, not calculating the angle properly as I was taking stuff out. But you make me feel so much better about myself. The fact that it was a double whammy, too. That's like, what sucks. The Brock and Dolby Podcast. So I was feeling stupid about burning my armpit, but uh, our text line is just lighting up with stories here that is making me feel absolute uh, way better about myself. Uh, Dude, some of these stories are <laughs> gnarly. Uh, we got a friend of the show, Ryan, on the phone. Dude, what's the uh, dumbest way you burned yourself, dude? <laughs> So my dad was driving, and I uh, threw the cigarette out, the, the butt out, and uh, wind caught it just the right way, and it came back up and into my shorts. Oh, my, dad no. goes, my dad goes, no, 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 I smell something weird. What happened? I said, I don't know, and all of a sudden I started jumping around. He's laughing hard. He knew what happened. Oh. It landed in between my jingly bits and my baking cucumbers. <laughs> 
and uh, it, it, uh, it decided that it wanted to singe that area and leave a nice good permanent mark. You got laser hair remover. <laughs> <laughs> Permanently. <laughs> hey, they should put that on the cigarette packs. That'll make you not want to smoke. <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> That's the new warning on the label or something. There. It's just some dude's bare thigh with a burn mark the on it. The amount of stories that we are getting of people burning themselves from smoking is insane. And I'm not going to pass any judgment because no, we've all been there. If you're a smoker, you've burned yourself. You've burned yourself before. Uh, we do have someone else here on the phone. We've got Mark on the phone. You've you've burned yourself smoking darts before? <laughs> it's, it's a story that happens all the time. It's not just one, one thing. <laughs> I mean, uh, first, first worst time is probably in school. You know, when you're trying to sneak one down by the stop sign there between classes and you're in a hurry and you go to take a drag and then you you're trying to hurry to get rid of that cigarette before the teacher sees you and then it slides <laughs> down the finger and there you go you got uh, you got to go to class and try to write with uh, two blisters between your fingers and used, our, to, used to call it the bad finger yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> our scars remind us that the past is real <laughs> that's right yeah dude there's a story in here this says, I once melted the eyelashes of my right eye shut with the heater of a cigarette <laughs> while putting on sunglasses. How many of us <laughs> have ever let a cigarette or whatever you're smoking yeah. and burnt the hair in your nose before? Dude, especially once I grew up the mustache yeah. and I started, uh, started like, was still it's smoking. It's a double whammy then, yeah. Dude, and then, and then... Because you get the burn and the ow, but then especially, women will not understand this, the mustache smell of the burning hair going right up your nose. It just lingers. Oh. It lingers so bad, it's dude. so awful, dude. <laughs> also, uh, seeing a few people texting in that they got ended up with burns after campfire cooking a marshmallow, mm. also a very dangerous thing. Because what do you do, right? You put the marshmallow over the fire, it inevitably catches, and how do you put it out? You just waggle it around a little bit. Three times out of ten, that's going to fly off and burn something. Who would have ever thought that marshmallows are just as dangerous as cigarettes, you know? That's what I've been saying this whole time, brother. <laughs> we need to get more warnings on these marshmallow pallet packages. <laughs> the Brock and Dolby Podcast. We got this message on the bad line here. Hey, Brocky, Dolby, big fan of the show. Just wanted to share my burn story uh, with you guys. Uh, one time, I was starting a fire for me and my buddies. My fiance was watching, and I filled the gas... Uh, a Gatorade bottle full of gasoline. <laughs> I'm going to pause it right there because you already know the stories <laughs> going down a great rabbit hole. No stories ever started. So I had gasoline in a Gatorade bottle and then not everything went right. Let's let Robert continue here. When I started pouring the, uh, the Gatorade onto the fire, the fire ran up the, ga the Gatorade <laughs> bottle and I had to throw it way high, way high in the air. All the splash from the Gatorade splashed all over my fiance. She looked <laughs> oh, like uh, God. Oh, it's the, the king from uh, Lord of the Rings 3 from uh, the Battle of Menestir where he's just on fire running off the cliff. Jesus, it was kind dude. of fucking funny. But, you know, she's on fire so I had to go bear hug her out and that's my story. Love you, Brock. Love you, Dobby. Love the show. That is either the greatest or worst Gatorade advertisement of all time. Is it in you? Is it on you? Is it on you? More like it. Such a casual way to be too. So my fiance was on fire. I had to go and give her a hug. And I mean, like, fine. I don't know how wild, like, the relationship is. But if they're still together after that. True. Yeah. Hey, if you ever want to get on the podcast like Robert just did or on the show, you can always leave a message on the bad line. 1-833-854-854. 2233. That's 854 bad and it's toll free and uh, it's open 24 7. And for the love of God, don't put gasoline in Gatorade <laughs> bottles, guys. The Brock and Dolby Podcast. Saw another thing over the weekend that just made me laugh because apparently now people are heeding the warning don't stare at the sun, but they're trying to come up with other ways. And now I guess the big plan for a lot of people is using the selfie camera on their phone. So that they can turn their back to the sun and then use the camera to watch the eclipse behind them. I guess. <laughs> and, uh, an astrophysicist from uh, St. Mary's University in Halifax was uh, was asked about this in an interview talking about the eclipse. And he was just like, 
No, no, don't do that. He said, one, it'll break the camera lens. Like oh, a, really? Uh, apparently, like a high dose, it'll burn out the sensor in your camera. Damn. And he said, the other thing is, is that you've seen it, like, if the sun is shining into your room or whatever, and it hits the screen of your, your phone, it'll make, like, a reflection somewhere in the room. There'll, there'll be the little bright spot. Oh. He says, if you're trying to see the eclipse using your phone's screen, you're essentially using it as a mirror to beam the solar radiation and light it's into like your eyes. When you hung out with that weird kid and he was like trying to burn bugs and stuff with yeah, his mirror. Yeah, <laughs> the except exact you're, same thing. Instead of burning ants <laughs> on a playground, you're burning your own retinas. Also, I just, I, I don't mean to be rude to anyone who is trying to take a video of the eclipse today. You don't need to. You really don't. You really don't need to take a video. We're all going to see it. There's going to be better <laughs> videos online. That's, that's just it. We're talking about, what is it, a million people are supposed to be going to Niagara Falls. Hundreds of thousands going to the surrounding communities. Millions across the path of the eclipse are lining up to see this. Nobody wants to go on Instagram and see your selfie of it's it. It's the equivalent of taking uh, videos of the fireworks on Canada Day, you know? <laughs> like we're, we're all seeing them, dude. It's yeah. cool. We don't need your Samsung Galaxy video. Right. Or- like, there are outfits in this world like <laughs> National Geographic that are going to have hundreds of thousands of dollars of camera equipment invested in taking time lapses and slow motion and, and high-def videos you can zoom into a million times. Your photo's going to suck. <laughs> I can't wait to see all the shaky videos of the eclipse today. Well, and th- this guy, too, this this astrophysicist, uh, Robert Thacker, great name, by the way. He also said he's like, if you want, if you actually wanted to use your phone to take pictures or video, you essentially have to cover your camera in the same material as the eclipse glasses. Oh, okay, okay. And which he had the perfect, he's like... If you have eclipse glasses to put on your camera phone, put them on your face and then turn around. Like, just look at it. Dude, that'd be, <laughs> you'd sound so stupid going into like the Rogers store or something. They're like, yeah, my camera's just not working ever since I pointed it at the eclipse for like a half an hour. Like, I don't think you can tell anybody. I think if you break your phone because you pointed it at the sun. Do you think if you have like Apple Care or something? <laughs> It's cut. Do they cover stupidity under those things? I or? mean, most times when you're using Apple Care, it's probably at least a little bit stupidity based. Yeah. But I feel like if you go in and you're like, the sensor on my camera burned out because I pointed it at the sun. Dude, it was a huge missed opportunity by all these phone companies not adding on like an extra charge of like an eclipse fee. <laughs> no, I think it would have been bad if they had put that on. Then people would have just burned out their True, phones. Yeah. As soon as people are like, oh, well, if I pointed at the sun and it breaks, I'm covered. Yeah. Oh, my God. The phone companies would go bankrupt <laughs> from all the idiots. It's got to be the most embarrassing. <laughs> I dropped mine in the it? toilet twice, so. Two different phones? Y- yeah, two different phones. <laughs> what were you doing? One was a sweatpants incident where I was like pulling, oh, up, I was pulling up the trousers. And it launched out? It's like slipped out of the oh. pocket. Uh, Mid flush, too, so <laughs> that sucked. Uh, and then the other time I was standing peeing and I dropped my phone in the toilet, so. Were you holding it? Yeah, I still have PTSD like when I go to the bathroom. <laughs> I'm always I I have dreams about dropping my phone about in the toilet. breaking your phone. Yeah, all the time, dude. So I mean, I guess I'm no better than the people looking at the sun today. I've only had one phone go in the toilet, and it was cat related. Mm. I had my phone. It was in an old small apartment my wife and I lived in, and I had my phone on the counter of the sink, which is right next to the toilet in this place. I left the bathroom for a minute, and all of a sudden, I just heard. Boonk. And I went in and the cat had batted my phone off the counter and into the toilet. Oh, and then with water, too, it's like it's like a no, 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 no. Yeah. You can, oh. like, watch your phone slowly fade away on it. Dude, putting your phone in the rice and just hoping. Just hoping this is the one time it'll actually it's work. It's never worked for me. I'm pretty sure that's just a myth. It's never worked for me, but I'll tell you, every time my phone gets wet, I pull the rice out right away. The Brock and Dolby Podcast. Right now we've got the front of the show Bill on the phone. Bill, what's the dumbest way you broke your phone, dude? Yeah, so a few years ago, I was uh, sitting around a campfire with my brother, and uh, we I had my phone on the stump beside me, 
wood stomp, and I just had the, I just bought a set of throwing knives, so trying to be a, a badass, I was throwing them at the phone, and I was able to put on either side in on top, and then about an hour later, tried to do the same thing, and uh, didn't go so well. First one just hanged <laughs> off it, and the second one just lightning through my screen. Is it too bold of me to assume that maybe a few drinks were uh, had in between <laughs> each session there? <laughs> There, there were a couple of wobbly pops had for sure. Now, when you went to the store to get a new phone, did you tell them that same story or? Uh, no, actually, uh, uh, I had to tell my wife because she was the one who handled the, the technology at that time. So it was about two o'clock in the morning when I walked into the bedroom and I just asked uh, if we still had Apple here. On my <laughs> that sounds honestly <laughs> worse than talking to the people at the Rogers store. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, no, that uh, she was not impressed with my antics. I thought it was hilarious. But Bill, she- hang on, hang on. Was it covered? The phone? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. They, they covered it. They replaced it. Oh, wait, that's covered under Apple Care? Yeah, yeah. If you don't tell them how, they just they just uh, you know, exchange the phone. Oh, okay, okay. So you didn't tell them that you threw a knife at it. No, 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 no. I, <laughs> no didn't, didn't tell the store that. No, definitely not. I think I told him I dropped it out of my pocket. Or something. Oh, that makes that makes more sense. It's like, what is what did you have? Like the Apple Care Extreme package? No, like, okay, like what warranty comes? All right, so you're never gonna believe this. Threw a knife through the screen of my. You phone. know, they say honesty is always the best policy, except when you're dealing with warranties and insurance. You know. I wonder how many great stories the people at phone stores and phone kiosks hear, though, because like. Bill smart. Bill kept it to himself, right? Don't tell them more details than they need to get. It. But you know, there's people walking in there. Well, it's got to be funny to work at one of those stores and you know someone's lying straight to your face. Sure. Like when I dropped my phone in the toilet, yeah, I told the guy at the Apple store when I went there that it had just froze while I was snowboarding, and he's mm. like, "No, I can see it's watered." Like they know, yeah, they know when you do certain things. They right? have they have systems in place in the phone that can give them like diagnostics to let them know. If you're working at the phone store, though, like, and maybe we're owned by a phone company, so I don't know, but I feel like I wouldn't be trying to put people through the paces. Mm. You know what I mean? Maybe it's because I've had to replace a couple phones. Yeah. But I feel like if someone came in and they were like, I my phone froze while I was snowboarding, and I look and I can see it's water damage, I go... All right, man. Better luck next time. And I switch them out. Like yeah. I, I wouldn't want to fight with people over there. I phones. think those people get lied to more than a guy that's cheating on his girlfriend, man. <laughs> <laughs> like I guarantee you, every single day, people are lying about what they did to their phones in there. It's just such a tough thing to admit because most of the time, like the last time I had to have a phone replaced, was because I put my phone and my keys in the same pocket in a pair of pants that apparently was just a little bit too tight. Mm-hmm. I sat down. My big old thigh pushed the keys into the phone screen, and I just heard a... Yeah. And that was it. Whole screen spidered out. I wonder how many missing phones uh, have got lost in, like, Vegas strip clubs, and guys come back, and they're like, I have no idea. Oh. They're like, don't look at the tracking, though. It's <laughs> it's, fi- it's gone. It's yeah. just gone. I imagine it was stolen. It was probably... Somebody probably just took it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Talking like a guy who went to get a beer with the work truck. <laughs> I don't know how it got to Montana. It's just, that's crazy. I was at Canadian Tire. What do you mean? Wow, you guys can follow that stuff, eh? That's crazy. Whoever took it must have really had some fun there. <laughs> This this is the Brock and Delby podcast. You know those BuzzFeed quizzes that are so much fun? Yeah, that's not what this is. It's the quiz with Brock and Dalby. All right, it's Monday, which means it's time for another edition of the quiz. I would rather stare at the sun. You and a lot of people, apparently, dude. All right, what do you got for me this week? All right, it was a WrestleMania weekend. I know it was a big weekend for you and all the wrestling fans out there. I'm so tired today, but it was such a great show. So uh, we are going to do wrestling theme songs, but here's the catch. All right. I am going to give you a band name. And you have to tell me what band is associated with the wrestler. Who does the theme song, all right? Okay, so you're giving me the band, I'm naming the wrestler, Mm -hmm. or you're giving me the wrestler? I'm going to give you the band name. Okay, okay. You give me the wrestler. Okay. All right? I think I can do this. I think think you should do good. Are... (sighs) Are all of these that have been on TV? Because there's some that were only on their albums. No, no, no. This is at least to my wrestling knowledge. These have been on TV. These are the ones that I've okay. seen. All okay. right. Okay. Okay. That's fair. Uh, so, for example, number one, and you should get this. Yes. When I say Limp Biscuit, 
Oh, that's The Undertaker, baby. Coming out on the motorcycle and everything yeah. and stuff. Absolute badass. I much prefer Limp Biscuit era Undertaker to uh, Kid Rock era Undertaker. <laughs> true, yeah. true. Yeah. <laughs> uh, when I say Motorhead, you would say? Oh, that's Triple H. That's an easy or, one. It's all about the game. Or Evolution, oh, which is yeah. also Triple H's group. See, I didn't like that because in, in the song, it sounded like he was saying evolution. And not- evolution is a mystery. Two for two. Look at you there. Uh, when I say pan. Tara, you would say. Rob Van Dam, baby. There you go. Old ECW days. Three for three. The kid is hot tonight. Let's see if we keep it going here. I don't know if this one will stump you. I don't think Mm. it will. When I say finger 11, you would say. Oh, finger 11 was Kane. That's right. Such a random pairing. Wow. I actually worked for one radio station that played this version of the song. Oh, really? In the regular rotation. Slow Chemical or something yeah, like that? Yeah, it was in Lloyd Minster, Alberta, and it was awesome. I feel like the music always cut out before the vocals could even come in. So. Yeah, yeah, it was really just the normal Kane music, but if you had the album, you got to hear Finger 11. All right, you're doing good. Four for four. Let's yeah. see if you can go five for five here. When I say Rev Theory, you would say... Oh. Oh. The Hell Yeah Band. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. But it wasn't it wasn't Hell Yeah that was the song. No, it wasn't. And I don't know any other songs by <laughs> Rev Theory. Uh, you stumped? Damn. Yeah, what's what's the Randy Orton. That's Rev Theory? That's the that's the Gimme a Hell, Give Me a Yeah. That's the same band, yeah. This is one of the most famous wrestling themes of all time, and I had no idea it was them. All I know is that one song from Rev Theory, <laughs> but between having Blue Mountain State as the theme song and yeah. Randy Orton, they're at least getting some good residuals coming in. No you know? kidding, dude. That's cr- good for them. Uh, and finally, you better be able to get this one. When I say Rick Derringer. Oh. Gonna fight for the right of every man, bro. That's real American Hulk Hogan. Sometimes I put this on at the gym. Dude, this dude, <laughs> this will get you fired up. I could run through a wall after listening to this song. I don't care if the United States is your biggest enemy. <laughs> this song will put some lead in your pencil. Somewhere man. deep down inside, brothers, we're all real Americans. And the fact that this is the same guy who made rock and roll hoochie coo. <laughs> Can we have a round of applause for Rick Derringer this morning? Yes. That's a guy who doesn't get enough respect, honestly. Just shows you can make a song like Rock and Roll Hoochie Coo, but if you say your prayers, train, eat your vitamins, you can also put out (laughs) the greatest wrestling theme song of all time. And that's why Rick Derringer is in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, baby. (laughs) Him and Dolly Parton. Congrats, buddy. Good job. The Brock and Dolby Podcast. What would you say is the greatest wrestling theme song of all time, though? I mean, I honestly, like, there is a big part of me that feels like uh, Hulk Hogan's, like, Real American is one of the best ones because it just summed up his character so perfectly. But it is also some serious 80s cheese. Yeah. I've always liked Ric Flair's, which is just the... Uh, Space Odyssey Space, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, it's just so fitting for like how he commanded the audience. It's pretty sick. Uh, I was always a big fan of like the Rob, Va- Rob Van Dam, like the WWE one. The, what do you say? Oh, yeah, hey. yeah, yeah. Hey. The, which they, hey. they had to try and make it sound as, as Pantera-like as possible because yeah, they yeah. couldn't get the rights. Uh, I know this is controversial and I'm not even trying to be funny or anything right now Hmm. one of the best wrestling theme songs of all time was the Chris Benoit theme song oh from Our Lady Peace yeah and and that's the thing is I love this song like and I get it turned up here a bit when does it hit but you can't listen to this in certain company dude you can't find this song. Like, they they erased it. It's not on Apple Music. It's not on Spotify. I think there's like one live version from an album that yeah. Our Lady Peace has that you can find somewhere. But other <laughs> than that, they've completely erased this song. I've always wanted to do an interview with Our Lady Peace. And like once I get to the end of the interview like that I'm happy with, just ask them that bonus question. Like, hey. What's your guys' thoughts on your Chris Benoit song? Just to see what they would say. Because it had to be cool at one point, right? Like, they were getting on WWE, getting more publicity. The songs played all the time and they stuff were, like that. They, they were in name with the dude as he was the biggest wrestler in Canada at the time. And then he did horrific things, and they're just like, oh, never mind then. 
the Brock and Dolby Brock and Dolby podcast. The Brock and Dolby podcast. I'm a big kid now. We're talking about compliments that you get as a kid, but uh, you don't really get as an adult. And uh, there's one. <laughs> that we just keep getting texted in here at seven six two triple five stands out above all the others. Uh, one compliment that you get as a kid that you don't get as an adult. Uh, it's very simple. It, go into the bathroom, uh, mainly pooping, pretty <laughs> yeah. much. See, the biggest thing is we compliment the kids because as soon as they can do it by themselves, we don't have to clean up after them anymore. Sure. Whereas nobody's cleaning up after you as an adult. Uh, I love the text from Steve here. He says, as a toddler, if you tell your parents you pooped on your own, you get praised. As an adult, they say, why would you tell me that? What's wrong with you? And, and it's it's all sorts of different angles. It's not only the fact that you did it. Sometimes it's the size of it yeah. as well. Uh, the, the wiping. Right is a huge accomplishment for a young lad or gal growing What's that, up. What was that line from Big Daddy? I wipe my own ass. <laughs> yeah, like, All right, yeah, congratulations, buddy. That's great news. That's a. I guarantee you, every parent remembers the first time their kid yeah. wiped their own ass. Meanwhile, if you came in through that door right over there and you were like, "Dolby, <laughs> what's what's a bigger moment as a parent? <laughs> your kid taking their first steps for the first time, oh. or your kid wiping their own butt for the oh. first time?" That's tough because it's such a proud parent moment for the first steps. Like, I remember when Alex took their first steps. Mm. It was such a... But my wife and I were, like, in tears. Versus the second one, it's more of a sigh of relief. That's just... It was like, oh, my God, we never End have to End of do an era, again. man. Yeah, yeah. We gotta keep our hands clean. <laughs> <laughs> no more diapers. <laughs> uh, I love it. People just keep texting, and it's like, yeah, nobody's asked me about what the size of my duke he's been in a long time. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say this. I think I think we've actually ruined a generation of kids by complimenting them on the size of their turds and stuff. Yeah. Because then you get people like me who still send photos <laughs> of a pretty when you have a particularly big one. There's a lot of times you're like, and you don't even respond anymore. No. I get a big one and I'm like, I got to send this to the fellas here. I like, used to respond with stop sending these to me. Now I'm just trying to go radio silent. All I'm saying is if you still have someone in your life that is sending you those pictures, they're just a good friend and they just want you to tell the <laughs> they just want you to be impressed with them. That's all it is. They're just trying to reconnect with their inner child and they want you to tell them they're doing good. I'm just a real friend. I'm showing you that everything's working okay for me. I thought you cared about my health and well being. I, I guess not. I care I care that you're healthy. I just feel like there's better ways we can communicate those thoughts. All I ask is everyone today <laughs> is to not look at the sun. And be a real friend. And- <laughs> Don't look at the sun. Look at my poo. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. what you're saying. Yeah, it's better than looking at the sun. <laughs> Debatable. <laughs> the Brock and Dolby Podcast. Ed's word of the day. Let's see what he's got for us today. Good morning, dear. Good uh, word. Uh, Jabberwocky. Yep. Jabberwocky. J-A-B-B-E-R-W-O-C-K-Y. Jabberwocky. And it's just meaningless words. That's it. Meaningless words. So, kind of like a drunk conversation. Anyways, have a great one. Cheers are up. Am I, am I not mistaken? I thought the Jabberwocky was like a dance group or something. There, there is. I think they were on like... America's Got Talent or like, whatever. So you think you can dance? Yeah. Like, that is America's Best thing. Dance Crew. Or maybe they, that was it? I don't know. I'm almost certain I've never watched that show. It was one of those early 2000s <laughs> dancing TV shows. Yeah. Yes. No, you're you're 100% right, but I'm guessing that that means they took their name from this word. Jabberwocky is basically just gibberish. Is that what it is then? Yeah, essentially. It's also about a poem, I guess, written by Lewis Carroll back in the day. Yeah, okay. Yeah, which was about uh, some uh, weird monster. So there's a lot of different uses of the word Jabberwocky from what we can tell. I, I'd like to start using Jabberwocky as like... <laughs> If someone's just talking nonsense or it's something nothing. like that, yeah, be like that's a bunch of jabberwocky, dude. Yeah, everybody knows that one person that can. T- they'll talk for ten minutes, and at the end, you'll realize like you didn't say anything. Mm-hmm. That was all jabberwocky. Yeah, <laughs> and but then you got to start breaking it down. 
That's, you have to you gotta like pop, them. lock, and drop it. Stunt on them. <laughs> as you do. Bust out some cardboard and start spinning on your head as you talk that smack. Jabberwocky, Jabberwocky, Jabberwocky. You say it three times when break dancers appear. <laughs> Dude, just do it again. Where are the dancers at? Use it wherever you can today. <laughs> For more Brock and Dolby. Tune in weekday mornings, 5.30 to 9. The Brock and Dolby podcast is brought to you by badshop.ca, the Brock and Dolby merch store, with all proceeds going to the Canadian Cancer Society.